Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things I've learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I was reading comments on my videos today, and I thought, why don't I pick a comment and you know off of one of my videos and make an extended video talking more at length about whatever that topic was. So I actually pulled um, a comment from my video, which is called Three Mottos to Live By. And I'm just gonna read you the comment and then I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. The comment is, my stepkid's mother being spiteful to me at the moment on our joint Facebook groups, etc. So I really need to hear this at the moment. Last night, I went on a half hour long walk just listening to your Peterisms channel to help me not be spiteful back. My husband and I don't want negativity in our lives and are actively working on being positive people. So having you on in the background in our lives lately has helped us so much. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate that comment, first of all. And I, when she's talking about the three mottos that I talked, uh, that I was in the video talking about living by, you know, it was, would you rather be happy or would you rather be right? It was kind of like the overwhelming, you know, response in there. As felt, you know, also not allowing people to rent space in our head and things like that. Um, and it's interesting hearing this comment because I think one thing we don't talk enough about is mixed families. And what I mean by that is, you know, divorced families, remarriages, things like that, kids from other, you know, marriages, whatever. And I think it's interesting that we don't. And I think the reason why we don't is because almost every, I, I would say the percentage of divorced, remarried families out there is greater than marriages that are still intact. When my parents got divorced, and I was, I think, six or eight when they got separated, and then uh, like eight or ten when they got divorced. I actually just had this conversation with my dad too long, not too long ago, and he was like, no, it was ten when you were divorced. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. So they were divorced when I was ten, and they got separated when I was like six or eight. But my parents were two of the only people that I knew of that were going through separation and divorce. Like one of the first, we were one of the first families, and I can remember that like kids at school thought it was real weird. And... Um, Today, it's just common every day, isn't it? Which makes me sad, you know? Like, what happened to, like, family values? No, but, like, what happened to intact families, you know? Did you know that the rate, the statistical rate for couples that stay together the longest are high school sweethearts? That's a true story. So, anyway, um... But I read that and I was like, you know, it's really interesting because I just had a conversation with my sponsor the other day. I don't ever want to get up on these videos and act like I am holier than thou and that I have it all figured out because I can tell you right now, life is a learning experience for me and I continue to try to remain teachable on a daily basis. Some days it's harder than others. But I'm not perfect, Peter, okay? I'm just not. Like, there's a lot I have to work on. And I had this incident happen the other day with kind of like this friend of mine that we just kind of have this ongoing battle and forth with you know and I really wanted to snap like I you know I have been really good recently with restraint of pen and tongue you know like does everybody does anybody just like see like Facebook stuff like I don't get on Facebook very often but with like Twitter and whatever and you're just like you want to bite back but you're like no nope, no nope, restraint not today I'm not gonna be taken there the thing is is that once I put my foot in there once I start that conversation or I start going whether it's just sitting with a friend and texting them what I really think about a situation you know what I'm talking about telling the truth like telling on somebody to, Telling them what you really think, okay? Not a watered-down version. But once I do that, whether it's through a tweet or whether it's through a text or whether it's on Facebook or whatever, what happens then is that that engagement becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's not only the incident or the issue that I'm dealing with with that person. It's also the social media backlash or the texting back and forth, which becomes very much like, I know you, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? And we're like, you know, 40 years old and it's like, I know you are, but what am I? Kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, why are we playing that game? So I often really try to not engage in that kind of stuff. Not because it's messy, which it is. Sometimes I like to get messy, you know? I think it's kind of fun. But it does me more damage than what I'm going to get out of it. You know what I mean? So the other day, I was like going through it, right? And I called my sponsor up on the phone and I said to her, I said, listen, you need to talk me down. And she was like, why? What's going on? And I told her, she's laughing on the phone, right? She's like, why are you getting so upset about this? Well, I felt real entitled to my emotions and my feelings. And I can tell you, if you had asked me in that moment, would you rather be happy or would you rather be right? I would have said, I want to be right because I know I'm right and that's going to make me happy. See, that's what I would have said. 
that's not what I said. Y'all want to know what I said? Okay, here's total transparency. What I said to her is, you need to talk me down because I'm going to say something that I don't want to say and I'm not going to care about it and I'm going to make the amends later and I'm going to say it knowing that I'm going to owe that person an amends. <laughs> she goes, you are heated today. I go, I am heated, right? And this is a friend of mine that I've had for like 10 plus years, you know, and I was like, I have got to calm my ass down. And I knew, I was like sitting there, I was like talking to her on the phone, I was like, I've got to cool my ass down. I'm gonna say something. Like, I'm gonna say something that I regret. And then I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to say that. It won't happen again. You know, I was having a bad day. Like, let me take responsibility. Let me clean up my side of the street. But sometimes I just wanna be like, you know what? Like, screw you. <laughs> like, you know, we all have those moments. I think that we need to have people in our life. Like, I'm so thankful that I have my sponsor and, you know, my best friend Tanya and my husband that I can say things to, like, I am losing it right now. And, you know, like, I got to just kind of process this and say something because if I don't and I don't get it out, like, I'm going to lose it, right? So you don't have to go there. And I also think the other thing is thinking to yourself, even in that moment where you're like, I don't really care what comes out of my mouth. I really don't. We've all had those moments where we feel real entitled to our opinion and it's like, I don't really care. I don't care what comes out of my mouth. I don't care how it affects somebody. I don't care if it hurts somebody because I am tired of being hurt. We've all had those moments. But you really have to think about how is that going to help the situation for you? Are you going to gain anything off that situation, number one? Number two, put yourself in that person's shoes, you know? When it comes to divorce and things like that, I don't when somebody else is being nasty, you know, like you're in a family and you have stepkids and that mother saying nasty things, okay, what might it be like for her to be on the other side witnessing your life? Or, you know, what might she say to you if you talk to her one-on-one? -on -one? And I know people are irrational. I know that you can't talk to some people. I get it, okay? Trust me, I get it. Then I think that's maybe when you with withdraw from the conversation or you stop looking at it for a while or you don't get on social media for 24 hours. And, you know, there are times that like, I don't talk about this very often, but there are times where I just need to be with Peter. You know what I mean? Or I just need to be with Peter and my husband or my dogs or my best friend, right? And I don't get on social media and look at it. Like, I'll post my videos and then you don't see me till the next morning. Like, there's a lot of days that I do that uh, uh, recently because I just need to kind of, like, take care of myself. And like I've said on here, if I don't have peace and serenity for myself, uh, what am I, good am I for anybody else? So I think that sometimes when you're in the Facebook groups and you're looking at it and all this kind of stuff and you're engaging in all these conversations, remove yourself. Say, you know what, for the next 24 hours, I'm not getting on Facebook and I'm not gonna go to that Facebook group right now. Have a friend read it. Say, can you read it for me and see if there's something on there that I need to address? Or maybe I don't wanna go there and see what it's gonna say. Maybe it's gonna be too hurtful to me right now, you know? Uh, I think t reaching out and talking to that person is a whole other option, but that's a different video. I think this is about restraint and pit and tongue and really thinking to yourself, if what I say or what I do, okay, how is that going to fix the situation? Is it going to make me feel better or is it going to make me feel worse? And the other thing, the other part of that is, you know, like, what do I really, is it really that important that I say something or is my peace of mind more important to me? And for me today, my peace of mind is like 10 times more important for me. It just is, you know? Because like, I'm not gonna change some people's opinions. I'm just not. And I have to realize that. I have to realize that what other people say and what other people do is none of my business, period. And I said that in my video the other day too. You know, it's none of their business what they say about me. Okay, I'm not in that. That's what you have to say. I'm not in that. That's about you saying something about me. I'm not in that. And I have to remember that. I can remember that I can stay in my lane, drive my car, and I don't have to worry about what they're doing in their car in their lane because they're not affecting me today. At least, I hope so. At least today. Now, ask me tomorrow. It might be a... Ooh, I might have a different opinion. So anyway, I love you guys. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.